Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee for the invitation to testify today. My name is Marcus Allen. I'm here to speak with the committee about how the FBI weaponized the security clearance process to retaliate against me for protected whistleblower activity. In late 2021, I raised concerns about the FBI director's testimony about the January 6th Capitol riot, not out of political motivation, but out of a duty to truth and integrity. This act, which I believe to be in the spirit of transparency and accountability, led to unexpected and severe consequences. Almost exactly three years ago today, I forwarded news articles to my superiors and others within the FBI about January 6th. It was literally one of my job, <clears throat> job duties to keep my colleagues informed about open source intelligence related to their cases. As a result of simply doing my job, the FBI accused me of promoting conspiratorial views and unreliable information. The FBI questioned my allegiance to the United States, suspended my security clearance, suspended my pay, and refused to allow me to obtain outside employment or even accept charity. This once storied institution, whose initials ironically stand for fidelity, bravery, and integrity, was punishing me for bravely challenging their integrity while they questioned my fidelity. The suspension ultimately lasted for 27 months. During that time, the FBI held my family and me in indefinite limbo, awaiting a final decision. Determined to not lose our home, my wife and I took early withdrawals from our retirement accounts to survive. It became clear that the FBI, with endless resources, the American people's money, was trying to destroy me financially so that I would give up. This is a fear of countless potential whistleblowers who see the personal cost of integrity. There are no words strong enough to describe the impact the FBI's lies about me have had on me and my family. The stress has taken a toll on our health, and our children have suffered, traumatized by the thought of our door getting kicked in or dad not coming home. The battle for truth and justice will, co will cost you, but the arduous good is worth it. The FBI's restoration of my clearance earlier this year, thanks to the efforts of Empower Oversight and the American Center for Law and Justice, was absolute vindication. It's a point I would not have reached without the prior help of Bigley Ranish and Judicial Watch. However, the experience is also a stark reminder of the system's flaws. It took legal battles, public scrutiny, and patience over three long years. No other FBI whistleblower has ever had his clearance restored as I did. Garrett O'Boyle and his family are still suffering in the same limbo we were, with no access to due process and no limit on the FBI's ability to delay and avoid independent accountability. How many other whistleblowers remain silent, fearing the same ordeal my family and Garrett's family faced with little hope of vindication at the end? Despite the stress and uncertainty, I've never once regretted standing up for truth. In fact, I'm grateful for the experience. Indeed, my family and I persevered due to our strength and faith, God's grace, and the sacraments. If you do not worship God, then you will worship something else. <clears throat> you can either serve God or you can serve mammon, but you can't serve both. This has been a purification. Well, we lost material items, we gained more important things. We've stored up for ourselves treasures in heaven. What we have gained spiritually has far outweighed what was lost materially. John Adams noted that the framework of our country was built for a moral and religious people, and unfit for the governance of any other. James Madison notes the duty to honor God is precedent, both in order of time and degree of obligation to the claims of civil society. Before any man can be considered as a member of civil society, he must be considered as a subject of the governor of the universe. I recently learned about comments made by Mr. Jeffrey Veltri suggesting I was delusional for believing in and seeking guidance from the Holy Spirit. Mr. Veltri currently serves as special agent in charge of the Miami field office. But at the time, he was an executive at security division overseeing security clearance decisions. To Mr. Veltri, I say you can insult me, but you should not mock God. It is an insult to the infinite dignity of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and it is bad for the health of your soul. This isn't about me. It's bigger. I am hopeful that the truth of what happened will be fully revealed and deter the FBI I've been doing the, from doing the same injustice to others. Though the path may be difficult, I must plead with other employees who have witnessed wrongdoing that they find the courage to speak up. You're not alone, nor will you ever be. Psalm 139 says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? I've been blessed to be supported by God's sanctifying grace, the blessed sacrament, men and women of goodwill, other whistleblowers, the charity of the American people, prayers and great attorneys along the way, like Tristan and Jason of Empower Oversight. Potential whistleblowers, please do not be silenced by the FBI's mistreatment. 
We are all here to support you if you choose to come forward. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Equally important is the awareness and involvement of the American people. This is your country. While I feel vindicated now in getting back my security clearance, it is sad that in the country for which I fought as a Marine, the FBI was allowed to lie about my loyalty to the United States for three years. Unless there is accountability, it will keep happening to others. Better oversight and changes to security clearance laws are key to stopping the abuses suffered by whistleblowers like me. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Peace and all good.